Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Aaron Valentine and... I'm Ashley Davies and this is our first video and yeah. our first video together. So this is uh, gonna be the story about how we met Pierre Lambert as well as Alex Chun when we were in Tokyo, Japan. How we got the opportunity to film a five minute challenge with him and the takeaways and the things that we learned from that. So we wanted to share that with you. Hopefully you guys can learn a thing or two as well. So we're gonna go over our seven takeaways, but before we do that, here's some B-roll. So how we met Pierre is we were in Japan and we were in Kyoto at the time and we had just finished watching one of his videos, the one where he captures the northern lights from an airplane. Really cool, if you haven't seen it, check it out. But we were in the market in Kyoto like 10 minutes later and there he is. He's there filming a 10 minute challenge with Nelly and Alex. That's another video, if you haven't seen that one, check that one out too. Um, but they offered to have us film a 10 minute challenge later that night. Unfortunately, it didn't happen because there was a typhoon coming through, but we exchanged a couple DMs and ended up linking up about a week later in Tokyo. So this is the result of that. We shot a five minute photography challenge through Piss Alley in Shinjuku. It's called Piss Alley affectionately because there's only one bathroom in that uh, whole alleyway. But uh, it was a really cool experience. So these are our takeaways from that. And hopefully you guys learn a thing or two as well. So jumping right into it. Tip number one is master your camera. Doesn't matter what type of camera you have, whether it's a DSLR, mirrorless, cell phone camera, film camera, just take the time to learn the settings and to read the manual, watch some videos on YouTube so that when you're out there shooting, you can change the settings intuitively. Yeah, and we know our cameras, but being in that situation, it was very high pressure. The alleys were very tight. The lighting was very low. People were moving very fast. And a lot of my shots suffered because I wasn't actively thinking about how I should be changing my camera settings to get the shot that I needed. Some of my shots ended up being a little bit blurry, but it was definitely a learning experience. And one thing that I really admire about those guys is that they're pros at handling their cameras. So if you can master the tool that at your disposal, then you'll be all the better for it. So tip number two, you might've heard this before, but shooting with a great camera isn't gonna make you a great photographer all of a sudden but truthfully, it kind of does help in certain situations. So uh, we were in Japan, we just picked up this new Fuji lens. It's a 16 to 80 F4 all around. And I was really excited to shoot with this, but being an F4, I don't think it would have performed that well in low light. Yeah, when we were shooting in the alleyway, it was just a little too dark and an F4 wouldn't have been able to let enough light in to get the shot that we were looking for. So we ended up switching down to the 23 mil F2 and it was able to give us the shots that we were looking for. So while having a great camera isn't the be all end all and it's not gonna make you a great photographer off the bat, you definitely need a good camera or at least good lenses to be able to capture certain shots. You're not gonna be able to capture the Northern Lights from a, an airplane or the Milky Way unless you have a camera or lens that's able to capture all of that light and process it. So invest in good gear, invest in good glass if you have the opportunity to do so. Point number three is practicing patience. When we get to a scene, we typically just shoot, 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 and then move on to the next spot that we want to go to. But when we were with Alex and Pierre, they really thought about their shots that they wanted to take, and they were waiting for a certain person or a certain thing to unfold in front of them. And that's something we really took away from shooting with them, is just waiting for the moment, thinking about the shot that we want to get, um, and letting the scene unfold in front of us. Yeah, that's something that I've really tried to take into my practice since shooting with them. Um, the perfect scene is not just going to happen the moment you walk up and press the shutter on your camera. Sometimes you really need to be patient, wait for that right subject to walk into your frame or wait for the light to change. But practicing patience will ultimately get you that shot that you're looking for. And if you're just impatient and just shooting, you're just going to get snapshots and, and nothing's really going to be that special about your shots. So uh, take your time with it. Tip number four is all about seeing like a photographer. Try to look at the world through the eyes of a photographer. So think about the light and how that's interacting with your subject, how it's gonna change over time. Think about how movement plays a role in the photo. Think about your compositions. Think about the subject and the story that you're trying to tell and the scene that the photo's in. Um, all of these other elements are gonna add an extra layer of complexity to your image. And if you can actively start thinking about those and how those ingredients can make your next photo better, 
all of your photos will benefit from that. So study the greats, study photographers, study from Instagram, study from film and, and the way that they frame their compositions. There's so many different ways that you can see scenes and you don't even have to have your camera out to practice this. The more you practice this, the more you'll actually open up your eyes to seeing new things in the future. All right, tip number five, guys, is don't be afraid to talk to strangers. So I don't know what came over me during that shoot, but I was just asking people like left, right, and center if I could take their photos. And most people were receptive to it. It was really cool that people were so into it. And this kind of taught me something because before that I'd try to sneak photos of people, try to shoot from the hips, and my pictures never really came out that well. But don't be afraid to engage with people and just ask them if you can take their photo. Like the worst thing that can happen is they say no and you move on to another person. And, Trust me, the next day you're not gonna be heartbroken over it. You're just gonna get over it and move on to the next. So asking people if you can take their photo is really gonna open up your shots and the type of content that you can capture. And it's just a more enjoyable experience if you can engage your subject in the photos. Point number six is collaboration. So don't be afraid to meet other photographers, meet other people that you can collaborate with and really learn some of the skill sets that maybe they have, how you can use it into your work and how maybe some of the stuff that you've developed you can share with them. Yeah, we've been shooting a lot more lately together but seeing Alex and Pierre travel and even just myself when I go downtown and I take photos, I'll talk to other photographers and sometimes we'll end up shooting for the night and you make new friends that way and you take things away from those experiences. So. Photography can be a solo sport, but it doesn't have to be. Make new friends in the space, it'll only make you better and open you up to new opportunities. Point number seven is just go shoot. Get out there, bring your camera with you every day and try to take points one through six to really develop yourself as a photographer and take a look at every scene around you and take as many pictures as you can because your first picture might be bad, your 50th picture might be bad, but eventually you're gonna get to your one millionth picture and it's gonna be a really good shot and you're gonna be really proud of yourself. You're not gonna get better by sitting here watching YouTube videos. You're gonna get better by going out there and taking pictures and being put into different environments and different challenging situations. So the more you can practice and the more you can experience with your camera, the better you're gonna get. Get out there, take your camera, go shoot. If you don't have your camera, use your cell phone. If you don't have your cell phone, use your eyes. There's zero excuse. Just go out there and do it. So hopefully you guys picked up some inspiration out of this. We were able to learn a lot from Pierre and Alex. And if you guys are interested in learning more about photography, Pierre is actually doing a 30 day to better photography course on his website. I'll link it in the description below. Both of us are doing it right now. We're on day four, day five. Um, and we've learned a lot already and it's really helping us to develop our skills. And you know, Pierre, thanks a lot. That was a lot of fun. Hopefully we get to do it again. Uh, if you're ever in Toronto, hit us up. But even if you're not Pierre, anyone here in Toronto, if you guys want to go shoot, send me a message. But uh, guys, that's it. That's all I had from today. So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below. All right, guys, that's it. That's all. Thanks a lot. Have a great night. Peace.